الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين الذي نزل فركان لا أبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا وبرك رسول الكريم على ذي أوصات وثقلين وإنس بشيرا ونذيرا ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين الشر لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك الله أشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله all praise and thanks and glorification is due to Allah. The praise is due to Allah because the praise belongs to Allah. He has no partners. He has no associates. He has no ancestors. He has no descendants. Almighty Allah, who subhanahu wa ta'ala, azza wa jal, has no mother, no father, no daughter, no wife, no son. He rules the universe alone. And I witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, prayers and peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. <clears throat> this God, alhamdulillah, that we came to, to worship today has complete and exclusive authority. He not only originated the heavens and the earth, he presides over the heavens and the earth, sustains the heavens and the earth. He is the light of the heavens and the earth and everything that is within it. Everybody bears witness to that. All of us here today bears witness to that. We bear witness to the oneness of Allah and we salute and praise and magnify his majesty. That's what we say. It's easy to say that. We say it with our, with our words, with, with our tongues, but too often many of us don't express that with our actions. So we pick up some bad habits along the way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, cautions us in the Quran. He says, Audhu billah min shaitan rajeem min al-nasi man yatakhidu min duni allahi adadan yuhibunahum kahu billah وَالَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا أَشَدُوا هُبَّ لِلَّهِ وَلَوْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا إِذَا يَرْنَا أَلْدَبَ أَنَّا قُوَاتَ لِلَّهِ جَعْمِعًا وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِدُ الْعَذَابِ There are people who take for worship others besides Allah. Just that part alone, it makes Muslims, man, how could they do that? The pagans, how could, how could they do that? But we need to check ourselves out. If further the translation uh, says, after there are people who take for worship others besides Allah, as equal with Allah, here's the part that makes me shiver. They love them as they should love Allah. If, I if we were to take a poll, don't respond. If, if we were to take a poll, say who loves Allah, everybody would raise their hand. If we were to say, is there anybody on earth, is there anything that we love more than we love Allah. Nobody would raise their hand. We say that because it's, it's like, you know, politically correct for a Muslim to say the obvious. I love Allah. There's nothing more than I, there's no, there's no love in my heart that I have stronger than the love I have for Allah. It sounds so, so Muslim-y to say. So it's, you know, so Islamic to say around Muslims. But those of faith, are, are, are overflowing with their love for Allah. Overflowing. We're, we're obsessed with our love for Allah. We're, we're, we, we just fill to the brim with our love for Allah. Those of us who have faith, if only the unrighteous could see, behold, they would see the punishment. That, uh, that to Allah belongs all power and Allah will strongly enforce his punishment. Now, <clears throat> There's something that, that many of us are, 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 are making a mistake doing. We're making a mistake, many of us. And we should love to be corrected. If we really love this deen, if we're really grateful to Allah for this deen, then we should, we should always want to be better. That's why we should welcome a, a, a brother or a sister or a close friend, a compadre, who sees a defect in us and reminds us if we really want to be better. I don't think there's any of us that feel as though we've reached our peak on mastering this Islam. 
that we, we can't get any better. I'm, I'm, I'm the best I could possibly be. None of us have reached that, and none of us would even dare say that, even though sometimes we uh, have a tendency to act that way. We say we believe in Allah as the one God who is the object of our exclusive worship, yet we inadvertently but obviously put ourselves and even our own selves, put our friends and even our own selves ahead of Allah. Stuff for Allah. How could he say that I would never put my friends ahead of Allah? I would never put myself ahead of Allah. But let's examine ourselves. Let's do an analysis of ourselves, a self-analysis. Because some of us have failed to analyze our own self. We suffer from what some people call um, analysis paralysis. We, we, don't, we don't analyze ourselves. We just assume that we're safe, we're there. So, we, so how do we do that? What, what, what bad habit do many of us have? Us meaning the Muslims, those of us who think that we got this Islam nailed. What bad habit do we have that puts us in a position to possibly be viewed by Allah as someone who puts ourselves ahead of Allah? When we get insulted, offended, hurt, abused, violated, we may have, we, and we have every right to complain. It happens to all of us. No one is, is immune from, uh, from occasionally being insulted by someone or offended or hurt or abused or violated by someone some kind of way, even if it's just verbal. And we would have every right to complain and what some of us have gone through, no one would blame us what some of us have gone through, you don't know my story. You don't know what I've been through, brother. No one would blame us if we felt like we had to hold a grudge against someone who violated our space. Almost justified, but we must be careful because holding a grudge is of no benefit to us. If we think about it, if we just stop and think for a minute, no matter what has been done to us, no matter what rights we may have to retaliate, to hold a grudge is absolutely no benefit if we ask ourselves and really be honest, because you can't lie to yourself. You can lie to me, you can lie to your friends, you can lie to, you know, people, your relatives, but, but you can't lie to yourself. None of us can honestly say that when we held a grudge against somebody that we benefited from holding that grudge. I do. I'm, I'm just, yeah, I see him. I know that was last year, but I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I never going to forget what he did, what she did. Almost justified. It makes no point. It only, now holding a grudge, let's analyze a little bit the grudge. Since we failed to analyze ourselves, let's analyze a grudge. The grudge basically only eats away at our being, our soul, like a cancer, a deadly virus oozing a nasty infection that makes us ugly to Allah. Think about it. When we're holding a grudge, it doesn't do anything but eat away at our own soul. It's a nasty, stinking virus that makes us look ugly to Allah. Why? Actually, even we look uglier to Allah when we're holding a grudge, and we'll tell you why. Even, even uglier than the deed that someone did to us who offended us and made us want to hold a grudge. Hmm? No matter what they did to us, it's not nearly as bad as how we may look to Allah when we're holding the grudge. Why? Because if there's any being in this universe that, ha that has a right to hold a judge, it's Allah. Excuse me, a grudge. It's Allah. After all that we've done, all of our inconsistencies, all of our negligences, all of our disrespect, whether deliberately or inadvertently, for the presence of Allah, out of all that we've done as human beings, Allah is the only being that has a right to hold a grudge and he will not hold a grudge. What's my delil? 
Allah says over and over in the Quran, he is off forgiving, off returning to mercy. SubhanAllah. He continues to return to mercy. We can't do that. You know why? Because we're so imperfect. We, we, you know, we're so proud. We have, we have a little trace of arrogance running through our bloodstreams. That we got, we, we, we're proud now. We got a chip on our shoulder. We got an attitude because somebody stepped on our shoe. Somebody put a scratch on our car or somebody said something about me that, that was not true. And so now I got a chip on my shoulder forgetting about what I may have done against God, subhanAllah. Never mind the fact that I may have missed a prayer without a valid reason. Never mind the fact that I may have backbit someone. Never mind the fact that I looked down my nose at a wayfarer or someone who was begging. Never mind the fact that I'll spend my time looking at useless R-rated or maybe even some of us, uh, uh, law forbid, X-rated TV shows or wasting our time with senseless, useless, meaningless, unbeneficial things on our internet and on our cell phones. Never mind the time that we've wasted. He insulted me. So I don't like him anymore. She insulted me. I don't want to be around her anymore. Look at her acting like everything's supposed to be okay. Even though Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Infal, ayat number 61, the translation offered to us is, if your adversary inclines towards peace, incline also towards peace, and trust in Allah, for he hears and knows all things. Some of us just want to hold a grudge way past the time that the person who offended us wants to make amends. Yes, that grudge is only making us sick. Some of us lose our appetite. We can't even eat right, can't sleep. We can't even focus on our salat. Can't even get a good, decent kushu within our salat because the person who offended us a year ago or two years ago or six months ago just walked into the room. What they doing coming in here after what they said to me? SubhanAllah. Can't even focus because we're, be, we're, we're being eaten up inside by a deadly virus that's infecting our whole soul, a deadly virus called a grudge. We assume the right to do something that Allah himself don't, it doesn't even do. SubhanAllah. But when uh, one of our friends a close relative or even a popular celebrity, a celebrity that we don't even know, insults Allah. It lies on Allah, lies on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or any of his prophets. May Allah be pleased with all of them. We're okay with them. It's okay. They just don't understand. They just, you know, they're basically a nice person. Someone insults the God that we say that we worship. Someone insults the God that gave us life. Someone insults the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that brought the religion to us that saved our lives. When we were a Hufratin Minanar on the, on the brink of the hellfire and Allah sent the Quran the hablalahi, the rope of Allah, the Quran, given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Someone insults Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, denying his prophethood. Someone insults the other prophets. SubhanAllah. They're okay with us because they're nice people. They're okay. We're okay with them. It's all right. You see, it might be justifiable, brothers and sisters, to hold a grudge against somebody who insulted us, who offended us, who hurt our feelings, who told a lie on us, something about us that wasn't true, and they continue to say it. It might be okay to hold a grudge on them if we're going to be just as angry, just as upset, just as vindictive 
about someone who lies on the Lord of the heavens and the earth or any of his prophets. It might be okay, but we won't do that. No, we don't do that because we're important. We're important. Well, they're a nice person, but what he said, but that said, said to me, what he said about me, I didn't do that. It's not even true. I don't even like him. He's a hypocrite. She's a hypocrite. She's a liar. You talk with venom spewing from our mouths. Hateful looks on our faces. Weak, if anything, handshake outside the pandemic. Don't even want to talk to them. Don't want to be in the same room with them. But someone who insults Allah, tells a lie on Allah, says that he has a son. Someone lies on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying he's not the last prophet. SubhanAllah. Someone lies on Prophet Isa Alayhi Salaam. SubhanAllah. Said that he was crucified. SubhanAllah. Lies on him. Three days rising from the dead. We just left Christmas. We're on our way to Easter. But they can lie about the prophets. May Allah's peace be upon all of them. But they're okay. But don't mess with me. Don't mess with me because you'll be my enemy. I remember when I was growing up, I don't know if to do it now. If someone talked about your mother, it was fighting words. We used to call it, I don't know what generation you're from, we used to call it playing the dozens. Remember some of you older people, remember playing the dozens? You get in the fit. I knew some brothers that got killed, got shot, trying to play the dozens. You talk, you talk about my mama? Talk about you, man, you crazy? That's our mother. We're supposed to honor our mother, right? The prophet peace be upon him said she gets she gets three levels of rights, or even over the father, the mother, the one who carried us in her womb. But yet she is not more important than Allah. If someone mess with our mama, they gotta die, or at least wish they was dead. But they talk about Allah and His prophets. May Allah's peace be upon all of them. And as long as they're a nice person, subhanAllah, they can come to our house and sit down and have tea. We can play a little basketball with them. Hmm? We can sit in the car and kick it. We can talk about the good old days. Yes. And, then, and what do we say? Oh, they, they'll be okay. One day, you know, they're, 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 Muslim, they're not Muslim, but they're sympathizers. I don't need no sympathy. Whoever doesn't accept Islam is the one that needs sympathy. I don't need nobody's sympathy because I'm Muslim. I'm sitting on top of the world. I have Allah and his messenger, the Quran. I got Ramadan, subhanAllah. I got Hajj, subhanAllah. I got the unity. I got Uswatin Hasana. I got the brothers, subhanAllah. I got Ahmasuna wa Jamaah. I'm sitting on top of the world. I got it made. I'm Muslim. All I gotta do is obey Allah and stay away from what he tells me to stay away from. I don't need your sympathy. You the one that needs sympathy. I don't need no sympathizer. But they almost like Muslim because, you know, they even stopped eating pork. <laughs> you gotta have more than a healthy diet to stay out of the hellfire, trust me. So, we should be brothers and sisters. Just as forgiving. If someone disrespects us, harms us, tells a lie on us, steps on our blue suede shoes, scratches our car, tells a lie about us or our family member, we should be just as forgiving, just as patient, just as understanding. That they, that they just, that might just be just how they are, just as understanding as we are with our friends and our relatives who disrespect the presence of Allah and tell lies on Allah and his prophets. May Allah's peace be upon all of them. But we're not going to do that. We can't discipline ourselves to do that. Oh, but we have to, but, but, but we can be friends. We're supposed to be friends. That's how you give da'wah. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Be friends, understand, give dawah, you know, 
but do the same thing if someone offends us. Be friends, understand, give them some dawa, subhanallah. The danger of grudges, brothers and sisters, is it puts us in a position to contradict our own belief and make us hypocritical than what we say we are. If we truly believe in the oneness of Allah, if we truly believe in the power of Allah, Allah is almighty, El Jabbar. He is, he is SubhanAllah, El Alim, the all-knower, SubhanAllah. Is Al Rahman, Al Rahim, Al Malik, Al Qudus, Al Salam, Al Mu'min, Al Muhammad, Al Aziz, Al Jabbar, Muttakhabir, Al Khaliq, Al Bari, Musawir. Allah is all that and more. If we truly believe that, then somehow we have got to be prepared and we should be willing to at least express the same type of patience with others that Allah has with us. Because certainly, if Allah chose, he could destroy us just as easy as he created the entire universe with one word, kum. When someone, think twice again. After we leave here today, let's think twice before we want to harbor something inside that doesn't hurt the person who we have a grudge against. It doesn't hurt them at all. It hurts us our very soul and we should ask Allah for his forgiveness and ask Allah to have mercy on us but before we can expect Allah to have mercy on us we have to be prepared to have mercy on others Muhammad the Prophet والسلام, said those who are not giving mercy will not be given mercy subhanAllah it was that and he recited that hadith when, when one of the Sahaba saw him hugging his grandchild and kissing on his, one of his grandchildren. He said, you kissing on the baby, you, bro, you kissing on the baby. He said, those who do not give mercy will not be given mercy. SubhanAllah. Let's be patient with each other. We're not perfect. Everybody has some faults and we should be very careful because we could easily forget that what the default that Allah sees in us might be much greater than the fault we see in somebody else. If we're carrying grudges, then be prepared that we should at least be equal. Be equal. Because that's, that's the worst, that's the part, that's the number one part that makes grudges worse, is that we are uh, uh, discriminatory. We discriminate. We pray Allah will help us to be just to our own souls and just to the presence of Allah. Kuli kani hada astaghfirullah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, as-salatu as-salam ala Muhammad Rasulullah wa Mustafa Ameen, wa la alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdu la shalikullah, ashadu anna Muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluh. O Allah, please send your choices, prayers, and peace upon Muhammad, upon his wives, upon his children, upon his grandchildren, upon the righteous companions, ajma'in. O Allah, please make us among those who learn how to see each other the way that we want you to see us. Kulu Amin. SubhanAllah. Um, I feel a little embarrassed in front of Allah because that was, this was not the, uh, the topic that I anticipated, that I had planned for today. But Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, revealed a defect in me. And, and, and as I began to try to correct myself, then I want my brothers and sisters to experience the same type of correction because all of us have that tendency. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yu'minuna hattakum hatta yuhibbu akhihi ma yubili nafsihi Now one of you is a believer to you love for your brother what you love for your own soul. So what I want for my soul is purification. What I want for my soul is to be ridded from the inclination to hold grudges. Um, discriminately uh, you know I discriminate we discriminate we talk about racial discrimination and, and, and um, black lives matter and police profiling and you know we talk about that kind of discrimination like that's the big deal 
But we have, we have a tendency, my beloved brothers and sisters, who I love dearly, all of you, to, to be discriminatory when it comes to what we feel about being offended. We discriminate in our response to being offended. We hold grudges against human beings because of a word that they said about us. But inadvertently, we're saying that we're more important than Allah. Because that same, very same, that someone else could tell a lie about Allah and it's okay. We should pray that Almighty Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala azawajal protect us, protects us from that inclination to discriminate, subhanAllah, that we should show, we should be willing to demonstrate to Allah that we appreciate. Let me tell you a quick, a quick story from the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many of us remember the story about uh, Hazrat Aisha, the youngest wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was the daughter of Abu Bakr. And many of us remember the story when the caravan was, was moving through the desert and, uh, and she was inadvertently left behind because when the caravan was about to leave, she remembered that she had dropped her ankle bracelet. Some say it's a wrist bracelet, but it doesn't matter. It was, a, it was a piece of jewelry. So when she ran back to look for a bracelet, the caravan didn't notice that she wasn't with them. She was gone. So the sutra, the security that was following the caravan from the rear, when they got to the state place where they had stopped, he found Aisha, Aisha Raylaho Anha, she was there, but she was waiting because she just assumed that they would, they would remember that she wasn't there and they would come back for her. So she was just waiting. But the sutra knew that they were too far gone, they may not notice. So he got off of his camel, some say it was a horse, but it doesn't matter. He got off of his, his steed and put her on it and walked next to him uh, briskly until they got close enough to the caravan because they had stopped again for another rest. So they began to make gossip about Aisha. They talked about her, accused her of zinna, accused both of them without any type of, uh, of, ex uh, of accepting any kind of explanation. Now, the reason why I talked about grudges is because the main person who was uh, instigating the negative talk about Aisha radiallahu anha was a brother who used to pass by her father's house, Abu Bakr's house every day, and Abu Bakr, Sadiq radiallahu anhu, would give him food every day. He fed him every single day. This brother that Abu Bakr Sadiq was looking out for was the main one that was talking about, and when he found out, when Abu Bakr found out that this was the brother initiating and, and, and inciting most of the bad talk about his daughter, he, he, was, he, he was hurt and enraged at the same time. If it had been you, if it had been me, I'd, I'd justify holding a grudge. You I mean, you didn't tell me what, you out of all people? But then he had, but, but then he remembered lessons from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How grudges are not only unfair and contradictory and, hip, and hypocritical, but it doesn't hurt anyone except the person that's holding the grudge. And he remembered the, learn, the lessons from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because you got to remember, even though that was Abu Bakr Sadiq and, uh, and whose daughter, that was the prophet's wife. And the prophet, peace be upon him, was patient with the people. He was upset about the story. He wasn't upset with his wife because he knew her character. He was upset about the whole story, the whole scenario. But he was patient. So what did Abu Bakr Sadiq do? Instead of holding the grudge, he started doubling the amount of food that he gave the brother when he passed by his house. Brothers and sisters, there is no benefit. And if anybody can find, if anybody can determine within their own lives, within their own experiences, some benefit they have gained from holding the grudge against someone, especially when we refuse to hold a grudge against someone who insults Allah and his messengers, peace be upon all of them, if we can find some type of benefit, then you can be justified holding his forgiveness and his mercy. And we pray that Almighty Allah will never hold a grudge against us. Mm -hmm. Allahumma lakal hamd. 
enta nur de sama wati wal ardi wa man fiha wala kalham enta qaymu sama wati wal ardi wa man fiha wala kalham enta al haq wa wa adu ka haq wa qawlu ka haq wa li ka ka haq wa jannatu haq wa naru haq wa sa'atu haq wa nabiyuna haq wa muhammadin haq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kama inshallah